Whoa. That's a big one. Hey guys, thanks for coming back to another video. Sorry I haven't been making a ton of videos lately. I've been really busy at work and really haven't been out on the lawn. And when I have been out on the lawn, I've been trying to get through stuff really fast. So what I've done since the last video, which I believe the last video would have been my Milo dump, um, which would have been two weeks ago now was the final result of that. So I tore it up with the aerator. I went over uh, the whole backyard Probably a total in some areas. It, it was a it was a tow behind aerator, so it's really hard to get super accurate with it in a small space. So some spots got like five passes, some spots got everything got at least two passes in the back. So I, I shredded it up pretty good. Uh, I mowed it. I, I waited a couple hours to let all the plugs dry. I mowed it. It was very dusty, and then immediately after mowing it, I sprayed everything down with some humic acid um, and watered that in. And then the next day we got rain. So everything, all the plugs, I can't find a plug in the backyard at all. They're all broken down. Um, and then what I'm going to do today, I'm going to mow. I'm going to bag. I was going to rake up the yard just to, because I didn't dethatch. I couldn't rent a dethatcher this, this year. Uh, I could have, I just, I'm cheap. I was going to rake the whole yard, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think it's fine. Um, but I'm going to throw down my seed, which is back there. Um, sorry. I'm going to throw it on my seed. I'm going to water the crap out of it. Um, and that's what I'm doing today. So uh, let's let's go take a look at the yard. I'm not going to like video myself mowing or anything. It, you, all, you guys all know what that looks like. Um, so let's take a peek at the yard so I can show you um, some of the spots. So sorry for the wind noise. But uh, yeah, you can't even really even tell anymore that we aerated in some spots. Over here was really difficult. I mean, it was like a 40 inch aerator. Um, and like I said, I was using a mower I was not familiar with. So getting in tight spaces and backing up and stuff was really difficult for me. Um, but these edges, you also can't really tell. Cause again, I, I didn't, it wasn't my aerator. I didn't want to break the tines or something. So I was staying really far away here with the aerator, which is a bummer. Um, Cause I, I mean, you can tell over here though, we definitely aerated. It's super obvious. Um, and as you can see, I absolutely ripped up this yard, which is what I want. Got my sprinkler spots marked out because I only got one sprinkler and I have to keep moving it. So I just marked out a bunch of spots where it's going to go. That little orange dot out there. I don't know if you can see it, but absolutely tore up this yard. Uh, a lot of problem areas like this. And as you can see, it's got like thicker grass out here and okay grass out here, but this is like a, a bare spot. It's got grass there. It's just crab grass. Crap, not crab. Over here is a bunch of crab grass, <laughs> but most of that's dead and dying um, from that trimic I sprayed with the clorac in it. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I mean, over here, it's looking phenomenal after that Milo dump. Um, but yeah, I, I tore it up with the aerator. Ah, bug is flying in my ear. Tore it up with the aerator, sprayed a whole bunch of humic down. I sprayed extra humic in the problem areas, um, like these. Okay, so the whole backyard is getting Schultz seed, Kentucky bluegrass, and that's it. Um, I got a, uh, an idea for a plan later on that I might follow through with, but I might not, so I'm just not gonna bring it up. And then over here, this huge big patch of dead is getting tall fescue. And I think what I'm gonna also do is toss just a touch of bluegrass on top of that too. Because uh, they're gonna be right next to each other through the fence. Um, and again, sorry for this audio guys. I don't know how bad it sounds. Um, I'm trying to put my back to the wind with the uh, mic in front of me. But all that's gonna get tall fescue. And I'm going to go over it 
um, really, really lightly with some Kentucky bluegrass. Because when you mix the two, you're supposed to do like 15, 10%, 20%, something like that, Kentucky blue to tall fescue. Um, so I'm gonna do a regular rate of fescue and then do some bluegrass on top of that, just a little bit, just see what happens. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna get to mowing and I'm gonna stop blabbering. Alright guys, again, still windy, so apologies for the audio if it's bad, but we're ready to seed. I mowed, you can tell it's pretty short. I mowed it down to two inches, I was going to go down to one, but my mower scalps in too many spots, because I really need to smooth out, especially over here. It's really, thanks to the trees probably, um, but it's really bumpy, it's really uneven, it's all over the place, um, but I'll, I'll worry about smoothing and leveling and stuff next year um, when I have more time and stuff. But I got my grass seed, Kentucky bluegrass, <clears throat> and like I said, it's Schultz, which um, is, in my opinion, from what I've looked at and researched and t everything, it's just a better version of Scott's, basically. It doesn't have any coating, um, so if I get a 10-pound bag of seed, I get 10 pounds of seed. Uh, speaking of Scott's, I got their starter with the uh, mesotrione in it. Um, and right here, we'll take a look. Right there, mesotrione, 0.08%. So this will cover 5,000 square feet. I'm not going to do a Milo thing and put all of it on the 3,800 square feet. I'm going to do it at the exact bag rate. The reason I need to do that is because I have an extra probably 1,000 square feet over on the side yard over here, around the corner, where I'm seeding tall fescue. Uh, so, I was going to use, uh, you guys have probably seen it already, but I have a Scott's Basic um, spreader. <clears throat> but I, because there's so much bare spots like this, just all over the yard, uh, I want to be a little bit more precise and accurate. So, I got this a while ago, I haven't shown as part of my equipment, but it's a Scott's Wiz. Um, and the reason I want to use that is because I can hold it. And then as I'm holding it, I can reach down and grab stuff and spread it if I need to. Uh, and this one has an edge guard where my Scott's Basic does not. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to film myself spreading because I, I don't have a great tripod. It's windy, so this little tripod I'm using right now will blow over and my phone will break. We'll get a crack or something. Um, plus, I mean, you guys, you guys know all this stuff. So, so um, let's take a look here at the analysis of this seed. So we got Argyle, uh, Barari, and Concerto, or, con yeah. Uh, we got um, other crop, 0.67%, which really, if you want really good results, you want zero other crop, and you want zero weed seed. Um, but that's not what I got going on, so that's okay. Um, again, I am doing the, with the weed preventer um, starter. Um, and really, my, what I really want to do is just get this lawn thick and lush. Um, if that's also including a little bit of weeds, that's okay. I can take care of it next spring um, or, you know, whatever. Um, see the test date. 519. So this is pretty new. Um, I didn't even check that when I bought it. But that's another good thing to check is the test date. Um, so this was May of this year. So this is not old seed. And I did pick this up at Menards. And a lot of those big box stores um, don't rotate their seed a lot um, <clears throat> so yeah um, so here we also have some spreader settings um, so I don't know what this would um, it go with a Scott's Wiz here so um, what I'm gonna do is just take a look so uh, this is a drop spreader so we're gonna exclude that we're gonna ignore that this one but we do have a Scott's Speedy Green and a Scott's, Scott's Edge Guard Rotary and they're both at three and a half for an established lawn. So, using my uh, skills of deduction and uh, stuff like that, I'm just gonna set mine at three and a half too. Uh, if that doesn't work, uh, we'll find out. But it is Kentucky bluegrass, so as long as it gets established, it will spread. It's not gonna spread super fast. Um, so, that's okay. I'm gonna mow it regularly, probably two, three times a week once it gets fully established to encourage lateral growth instead of vertical growth. Um, so maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. We'll find out. Uh, my other plan is 
um, after all this Kentucky bluegrass is grown up in four to six to eight weeks, somewhere in that range, I think I'm going to overseed again with some perennial rye just to get everything really, really thick. Um, and I really think over here in this section, I don't think the Kentucky bluegrass or the rye are going to do very good um, just because it's really, really shaded. I think this year they'll be fine. And then next year I'm going to start seeing them suffer when they, when this is such heavy full shade. Um, so I think for that reason, I'm going to have to overseed uh, probably some creeping red fescue. Um, maybe some a, some a really good variety of a dark, thin, bladed tall fescue because that tall fescue will do in the shade. Uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't want to keep blabbing. Um, but we can also see the actual rate. So for a new lawn, you need to do 10 pounds per 1,000 square feet. I'm sorry, 10 pounds per 3,250 3, square feet, which is weird that, that they would put that. Um, <clears throat> um, for an existing, or if you're overseeding, you're going to do 10 pounds per 6,500 square feet. Uh, and for a bare spot, you're going to do a quarter cup per two foot by two foot area. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to do those rates exactly. I'm going to do this rate because I'm going to follow this. Whoops, sorry. Um, but I'm not going to do this thing because I'm just going to spread it where I need it. Uh, and of course, if you're new to seeding and stuff, you can always read the instructions on the, you don't even have to buy it. Just go to the store and read the instructions on the bag of seed. Um, they're not going to be as, you know, as DIY pro, but it's going to be, the, you know, it's going to say, here's how you prep, here's how you fertilize, here's how you seed it, here's how you water it. That's all you need. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to spread this seed, and then immediately after that, I'm going to spread the fert, and then it's going to rain today. So I'm not going to water it in right now. I'll just let it rain. It's supposed to rain in a couple hours. Um, so I'm just going to let that happen. So uh, once I get this, I'll touch base with you. Um, show you what I did. Bye. Okay, for now, I'm going to keep it at this uh, medium angle instead of the white angle. But you saw it before. Here's all that little seed. <clears throat> and I did just seed at the rate. And some spots look heavier than others because it is a little bit windy, but I'm okay with it. Um, if it gets choked out and doesn't grow in those spots, then I'll clean it up and seed again. But um, I did have some extra tall fescue seed. So I decided to, uh, because this is a heavily shaded area right here, I decided, well, tall fescue is going to grow better than Kentucky bluegrass in this shade. Let me cut to a better angle here. Uh, in the shade... So I decided to, to, to throw it down all over the yard, but I did it heavier over here just to kind of cover my bases. Um, and like I said, I also put that starter down. And that starter was a lot finer than I thought it was going to be. So that was pretty cool. I was expecting, you know, like prill size like Melorganite. But um, nope, it was like, I don't know. I can't think of another fertilizer that was similar to but over here is just tall fescue. I had enough Kentucky bluegrass to do a little bit over here, um, but not enough to do this whole thing. So, so I got seed all the way over here and I kind of got up in the edges. That's fine, I want it to blend. And I kind of got over here and that's fine because I'm lazy. <clears throat> so like I was saying, tall fescue down here uh, and this guy I'm putting right back here and no seed's going to grow there, and I don't care. And I might have wasted that little tiny bit of seed, but, I mean, it's like three inches wide, so who cares? I don't care. And again, lazy. So, uh, I really tried to get this transition good. Uh, and sorry for all the loud noises, guys. I don't know how this audio is going to turn out, but whatever. So, tall fescue here, Kentucky bluegrass here. I overthrew it on both sides, so that way hopefully it'll blend. Um... Uh, same with along the fence line. But my yard is... Oh, hey, look. I did find some plugs. Look at those little guys. All right. Well, I'll do a follow-up to this in a couple weeks, which is when the fescue should be growing in. And then a couple weeks after that, the bluegrass should be growing in. Um, but what else am I going to do here? Well, um... Not today, since I put the starter fertilizer down today with the seed. In a week, I'm going to put some Milo down. It might seem like a lot, but I'm going to do it, see what happens. 
Uh, and if that looks good after a week, then a, another week after that, so two weeks after the first milo app, I'm going to put another apple milo down. Um, by then, I'm probably going to start mowing it. Um, and I don't know if you can see these. Let me flip the view here. So there's one. And there's one. And there's one. Those are my sprinkler markers. Um, so I have one sprinkler. And it's that little blue guy up there sitting on the table um, and two hoses here but I'm gonna be walking on this grass from from today what well, it's gonna supposed to be raining like all week so I'm not gonna have to walk on it too much but I'm gonna be walking on this grass and there's a good chance that after all the rain we're getting it's gonna be some nice cool weather rolling in and the kids are gonna play on the grass and it's just gonna happen so if, if I do get some baby grass stomped on, that, I don't care. That, you know, that sucks for me, I'll just see it again. Um, so I'm gonna be walking on it, I'm gonna be mowing it because I don't wanna get, let it get too tall. Once this hits about probably five or six inches, I am gonna mow it. So um, you know, if the Kentucky bluegrass is still baby and I crush a bunch of it with the mower, too bad, that sucks. Um, but that's the plan and that's what happened, um, yeah. So in an effort to, to not blab too much, I'm going to cut myself off here. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.